Hello everyone, this is Christian Melanexton Interactive and in this video we are going to concentrate on taking the database that we created in the last video and uh, you know seeding it with information so we'll have uh, uh, a database or I call it a domain seeder here which will run automatically uh, when the application is start up or is started up you know as long as it's in development mode We'll create the page to be able to read the article and uh, you know, prep everything for, as I explained in the video, for setting up full text search on our website and some subsequent videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're gonna do is to create a new uh, Razor page. So we'll go into the Razor Pages folder, and actually I'm gonna create a new folder here. I'm gonna call it Articles. All right, so now we have our, oops. Helps if I, in fact, <laughs> make a folder and not a file. Turn that down. So new folder. All right, this again. All right, so inside this folder here, we're gonna create a new file. This is gonna be the file that, uh, or the page that we view to read the article. So we'll call it um, read.cshtml. And yeah, we'll do that first. And let's go ahead and just while we're at it, create the read.cshtml.cs folder. In fact, I'm gonna start with the uh, .cs folder. And what we'll need is to go ahead, so I used to having the namespaces and all that taken care of for me. So we have web UI dot pages dot articles. All right, so we have a public class read model. It's gonna inherit from page model. Perfect, my little light bulb. Our razor pages in here. All right, so we have our class. What we need are a few properties here. So the first one, we'll have a string author. This one will be a date time. Um, created and we'll import that in a second. And prop int the ID string oops, title. Go back up, here's our little light bulb. Get our date time in here. All right, so we have our properties now. What we need then is to have our get method. So public void on get. We're gonna hard code an article here for a second. So article equals new article. While we're at it, light bulb it, and close that. All right, so let's just set those. So author, just because I want everyone else to type my name as much as possible, put me, say created, and date time, dot now, and to universal time, just because. The ID set for one and title, the article title. All right, so basically, obviously what we're gonna do here is uh, retrieve this article from the database. So this is our stand in for the moment. So then what we would do is to use that to uh, populate our properties here equals article dot created article dot id and title article dot title all right so now we have everything set up in the model go ahead and save that go over to our read here what we'll do is say 
That's page. And the model is a read model. And we'll just put a whole bunch of divs. Yeah, model dot author. I wonder if a bill would give me the IntelliSense. But model dot created. Div at model dot ID and let's go ahead and save that. And first off, see if we got any problems. Just refresh. Let's read. No. That's what I get for using uh, Visual Studio Code for this. Oh, the problem is I have the server running, of course, but the, uh, you know, this wasn't included in the project when I started it, so it doesn't know to rebuild when this thing is changed. So we'll get it to rebuild. I guess we can watch it over here. So let's cross our fingers now. Still up. Oh. Uh, articles. So there we go. If you go to the right endpoint there, so it's in the slash article slash read. So at least the page is working correctly now. And all right. So we're gonna go back here to the domain stuff that we made last time. So we go into the I domain repository here interface. We have this articles, but we don't have any way to save any changes or anything. So let's go ahead and add a method to do this. We will have one eventually that's a asynchronous method, but we're going to need a synchronous one here to deal with uh, um, seeding the database. So you change the or the interface. Come down here. Let's actually see. So we have our, hmm, I guess I have it in there. I just didn't uh, add it to the uh, interface. We'll do it eventually. But inside here, all we're going to do is uh, return domain context dot save changes. So now we have a way to synchronously save changes. We can close these. All right, next up. So inside the domain folder, I'm gonna create a new file here. And uh, I just called it domain cs. It says class that we're going to use to uh, seed the database. So we don't have to keep adding things manually all the time. So I have namespace web UI dot domain. I'll just make it a static class. In Cedar. So what I'll expect to have in here, actually, uh, <laughs> I need a constructor. So we'll have public static void seed. So our method here will take in an I domain repository. Repository. And we're gonna have another method. You know. We're, who knows, at some point in time, maybe we'll add more things to our database. It's supposed to be C, not C. And articles, and why is it public? Who knows? All right, so now we can go back up to our seed method and just say articles, pass into the repository. First thing that we're gonna do is check. So if repository.articles.any, no, not add range, any. Guess because I do not have link imported there. So if there's anything in there, I just wanna return. So, so, you know, every time the, this is going to run every time the application restarts. So, you know, 
I don't want to add the same stuff over and over and over again. So we'll just put that there. For now, we are just going to actually remember where we got that article before. So read. We are going to snatch that thing out of there. So now we have an article. Of course, we cannot use the ID because it's a identity column. So we'll have to, it'll complain at us if we try to populate it ourselves. So now we say repository.articles.add article and repository.save changes. All right, so I think I should take care of it for that. If I remember the changes to making the article there. So of course we have a problem now that uh, I've stolen that. Actually, I guess first what we'll do, stick with the article, let's go to the startup file. So we only want this to run during, um, you know, development. So we'll come down to our configure method here. We'll say domain cedar.seed, and we need to pass in the domain repository, which what we can do up here is to say domain repository, We'll just have it injected in for us here, and then we'll pass that in. Save that. Startup is good. So now we'll come back to our read.cshtml.cs file and say that we want our article, and that's going to be equal to await. Once again, jump in the gun. We do need a constructor here, uh, read model, and inside of that we need a I domain Tory. Uh, I guess we're already important domain. Okay, so let's do private read only. I domain repository. So repository equals repository. Now we come down here, await repository.articles. For the moment, we'll just do first. So once again, a sync and entity framework core there. Oh wait, oh, and of course we have to modify our signatures. On sync task and import threading.tasks. And save that. Any luck, we should have seen some restarting. We do. So return. Yeah. Everything's still working here. We saw that actually, we saw it quickly. You see the date changed. So now we have uh, the information in the database. All right, so now, of course, all that has is, you know, the author created ID title. You can add whatever else you want. Of course, the article requires basically content and don't want to have the content you know, stored in the database. So we'll have it as pages on the, on disk. So what we'll do is we'll come back in here to our folder here. So inside of our articles folder, what I'm gonna do is create a new file. Call that content, content one dot CSHTML. All right, so inside of, so the, the article is basically gonna be broken up into two parts the intro and you know the body, the main part, which I'm calling content here. And what then I have is the content. I don't, you know, we'll have gibberish in the content or lorem. So let's go ahead and close that. So we have the content. Now we go back to the articles folder. And again, I want uh, intro um, .cshtml. 
So there is a something to note that in the content I will have obviously HTML tags, the you know any razor syntax stuff going on. But inside of the intro, all I want to do is to have plain text. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, restriction just to make it easier on having to deal with. In the end here, after this video, what we're going to do is work on having um, full text search, you know, without traveling off to the database. We're going to have an index on the web server. And we're going to index, you know, the information that we want from the database, title, author, that kind of stuff. And we're also going to index the intro. And that's why I just want to make it easier on me not to have any HTML tags, obviously no razor code, that kind of stuff. I guess razor code is not that big a deal because we'll use the view renderer to convert it to a string anyway. So I guess mainly just uh, don't have to deal with the HTML tags. All right, so now we're going to go back to our model here and to see that, again, everything else is working. And it, in addition to the properties that we have right now, we're going to add a couple more. So I'm going to create a string. I'm going to call that content path. All right, and I made another one, and I called it prop string. Great, too many tabs. Intro path. Back down here when we're populating things. Um, what we're going to, what we would generally do is so I'd have, you know, this article is ID 1. So it has content 1, intro was supposed to be intro 1. So let's rename that. So that when we come down here and do, say, uh, content path, that will be equal to the template string. And we called it content and let's pull out the article.id.cshtml. So that's the content path and the intro path. Intro. Actually, why am I getting, here we go. We'll just shorten things, we'll just use ID, right? <laughs> Whoops, just about made a mistake there. So I did in the uh, article, of course, we're gonna, is deriving from properties that we're setting. So I went ahead and put those at the end. So obviously the ID is going to be set at that point. All right, so now we'll go back to the actual page itself. So the read.cshtml, leave all that gibberish up there. And I put an H1 for intro. And inside there, we'll just use a uh, uh, partial tag helper here. And all we need is name. That's going to be at model.intropath. And h1 content, another partial. dot content path save that crossing the old fingers here and a little big so we have the uh, um, intro and the content showing up so what we've accomplished here basically is to have uh, anytime our application is restarted our domain seeder will be run. It will add information to the database, in this case, one article, if there are no other articles yeah. in the database. And now we've broken it up, or I've added a read page, and now a read page contains, you know, the content from the database, as well as the actual intro and content, which are files on the disk. Like I mentioned previously, uh, we'll spend the next few videos using the uh, using this information to create a search index 
so that uh, you know we can have full text search on our website. Okay, until the next video, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.